Hey y'all, welcome back to the studio. I'm Lane Zolke and this is Master Engraver TV and you are watching the first in a series of episodes featuring the Firearm Engravers Guild of America Colt 1911 auction gun for the 2019 show. Now each year three to four Master Engravers are chosen to collaborate on a project that will be auctioned off at the following year's show and this year Bob Strosen, myself, Barry Lee Hands and Brian Powley were all chosen to work on this gun. Now the gun started life as a plain Jane Colt and went first to Bob Strosen's shop where he slicked it out, prepped the gun for engraving, got rid of all the major logos on the sides of the slide and left me a blank canvas to design on. From there it went to Brian Powley's shop who's just a whiz with gold line inlay and he did all the 24 karat gold borders on the entire slide and frame. This year I was chosen to do all the design work and so I've come up with a scroll pattern that will cover about 75 percent of the gun. I'll also be installing a version of the Firearm Engravers Guild of America shield on top of the slide in four different colors of precious metal. Now for this first episode I thought I would show you what it looks like to complete a section of the gun from transferring the design to background removal and finally installation of one of the raised gold leaves. Now since engraving this section will take about eight hours, I'll be editing the video down into about 20 minutes or so. We'll be speeding up some of that video and we'll be showing some of it at actual speed. I'll indicate the playback speed in the top left corner of the screen. So let's get this slide locked in the vise and I'll show you my process. I'll be explaining some of the techniques that I'm using along the way. Let's get started. Now I know some of you are wondering about the practice plate that we started earlier, but since I'm on a deadline to finish this gun, I thought we'd switch our focus to the Colt for now and then get back to the practice plate when the gun is complete. Now here's our finished sketch, but I rarely follow the design exactly as it sits on paper. I usually alter it as I start to transfer it over to the gun itself. Now here you can see a section that I've already completed with fine shading, deep relief background, and raised gold leaves. A section like this takes approximately two days to cut from start to finish. Now this section hasn't had its fine shading added yet, but the background is stippled and it's ready to go. Here's what that looks like when it's finished. Again, this is nearly a day and a half of labor for this section. Now here's what the transfer looks like. I've drawn the design in pencil and later I'll come back and scribe around the outline to make sure it's permanent before I start cutting so that nothing gets wiped away. Now the leaf that I'm cutting here is going to be inlaid later with gold. So you'll see me leave a bit of space between the background area and the leaf itself. And you'll see why I do that later. I'll also cut some lines to delineate where background will be later.
So now that I'm done with the outline, what you see me doing here is cutting away from the edges in preparation for cutting my background down. I lean the graver in towards the background and I'm cutting a bit of a border between the outline and the interior areas of the background. Now you, here you can see I'm starting to cut the background away. I'm using the same 120 degree graver that I've used for everything else. And as I cut, I'm cutting little furrows into the metal. They look like garden rows. And those will be cut back down later with a flat graver. Now you can see we've moved back on to that leaf that I told you about earlier. This is the one that's going to be inlaid with gold. And so I'm taking a lot of care when I'm cutting the background away here to lean my graver towards the inside. Now I'm taking my flat graver and I'm going to cut the background of that leaf down perfectly flat. Later on we'll be treating that background to accept the gold. But right now I'm just trying to keep really clean walls. So one of the benefits of using this technique with the V-graver first and then the flat graver is that the V-graver cuts serve as kind of a depth gauge so that when I come back later with the flat, as long as I cut away any evidence of those furrows, I know I've reached the proper depth for my inlay. And the same goes for cutting the background around the rest of the piece as well. So now that I've gotten the background flattened out, I'm coming in with a 90 degree graver and I'm trimming the walls of the inlay cavity. So now that the background is flattened, what you see here is me raising a field of burrs with the tip of the graver. I drive the graver into the metal and push it forward, which creates a little curl or a hook of metal. Now I didn't like the way that this steel was acting on this Colt 1911. It was really stiff. So after this was done I came back with a stipple tool and I used a different technique. With the stipple tool it also creates little hooks but it creates thousands of tiny little mushroom shaped heads for the gold to lock into when it's driven down with the punch. And here you can see me going back over that cavity with the stipple tool that I mentioned. It's made out of carbide and sharpened to a needle point. Once the stippling is done, I'm coming back in with an anglet graver into the tips of the inlay where it narrows down to a point. Now you see me using the chisel and I'm creating a little bit of an undercut. I can do this with a stipple tool or with a little flat chisel. In this case it's a little axe head shaped chisel that I'm using. And as I run it along the bottom edge of the wall it creates an undercut for the gold to lock into. This is in addition to the stipple pattern that's in the background as well.
So now that my background is finished, I'm offering up a piece of gold, the same size as the line width of the cavity. Here I'm taking a brass punch and I'm lightly driving the gold down into the cavity. It locks into the stipple background, provided it's done correctly, of course. I work my way along, making sure it's locked down as I go. At this point, I'm only using fairly light pressure, just enough to lock the gold in place. The gold wire has been annealed, so it's dead soft. So after I've snipped off that line of gold with a flat graver, I'll start in on the next row and I'll work my way across the cavity in this way. Once the cavity is filled, I'll take the brass punch and I'll work my way back across the gold, making sure any seams are filled up and that the gold is evenly seated. After that's done, I'll take a carbide burnisher and work my way across the gold. And this closes up any final seams. After the gold's been burnished, I'll come back in with the 120 degree graver and I'll trim all the edges back up to my reference point. After the edges have been trimmed, I'll come back in with the carbide burnishing tool and go over the leaf one more time, this time rounding out the edges and giving the leaf some shape. When the inlay is complete, and before I stipple the background, the last task is to flatten the background the rest of the way. I do this by trimming the edges with a scorper, which is basically a V graver with a flattened tip, and then a flat graver to cut the rest of the background down. Now as you watch me stipple here, you can see the background goes from a bright and shiny finish to a nice even matte finish and that's what we're looking for.
Now as we start cutting our background, I'll slow things back down to normal speed so you can see what that looks like for a few minutes. Now we'll increase playback to six times actual speed. Anytime you're trying to translate an eight hour engraving into a 15 minute video, there are going to be compromises. But this speed seems to convey the information well without dragging things out. Well that's it for this section of the Colt 1911 slide. I hope you enjoyed the video. Keep in mind that this was about 8 hours of engraving condensed down into an 18 minute video. As we complete new sections of the gun, we'll be posting those in new episodes as well. So keep an eye out for them. Till the next time, thanks for watching. If you're interested in firearms engraving, consider joining FAGA, the Firearm Engravers Guild of America. You can find us at www.fega.com. On the website, you can also find a list of regular and master engraver members if you're looking for an engraver in your area. With your membership, you'll also get access to information not available to the general public, and you'll receive our quarterly magazine, The Engraver. It's worth the price of admission alone. If you get a chance, join us in Las Vegas, Nevada on January 25th through 27th, 2019 for our annual gun engraver show at the Westgate Resort and Casino. It's held in conjunction with the Beinfeld Antique Arms Show immediately after SHOT Show. 
We'll have over 50 tables of Fega members showing off their work, and you'll be able to see the Colt 1911 auction gun in person. Hope to see you there. You can visit the Fega website for more information on the show.